Today's location is probably quite familiar to local residents. It's Blindford Nature Center. In addition to the farm, classes, summer camps, and wildlife experiences, Blindford features over eight miles of trails. Those trails will bring you to woodlands, meadows, prairies, and wetlands, covering over 260 acres. So let's get started. Half submerged tree limb is a good example of a detail of the wetlands that I want to capture in a picture. When shooting items in water like this half submerged limb and these little plants, you want to capture the reflection in the water as well because that provides a mirror image and it tells more of the story than just cutting off the image at the base of the item itself. So while my preference for photography is usually black and white, specifically infrared, I do sometimes photograph in color. And it just depends on the subject matter, like you have here this rotting piece of wood and the green of the new plant life shows a contrast in color of green and brown. When I do choose to use color, it's usually because there's either one dominant color in the picture or there's a story that I want to convey that can only be done so in color. I'm very selective when I choose color because I don't want it to distract viewers from the composition itself and from the subject of interest. I use color to add to the composition and not detract from it. So here's a simple tip when you're out photographing in nature. Look in front of you and behind you as you walk along the trail. So if you can see the path behind me, looks like this. It's a great shot of the path. You've got some overhanging branches. You've got a curve in the path. And here's the path in front of me, equally attractive. There's a curve in the path, so I don't know where it leads to, which is intriguing for me and it's also full of life as shown by all the green growth. Earlier I talked about capturing the entire reflection of the object in the pond. Here I want to talk about framing a shot. And here's a perfect example of using the items in the composition to do that for you. The lid projecting out towards me is creating almost a diamond or box shape. So I'm going to use that and incorporate that into the composition. So you're using the subject of interest not only as your focal point, but it's also helping to create a framing mechanism for the shot itself. When I was growing up, my dad would tell goofball or made up stories at bedtime. He attribute this nightly routine to helping me develop a vivid imagination. So when I see unusually shaped trees, I immediately think of all sorts of stories of how this came to be. Any photos that I take of them are portraits, trying to capture their unique look while also alluding to their mysterious past. Here's another simple tip. Use repeating patterns in your composition to create interest in it. So in this composition, I have two branches that are leaning at the same angle. That's gonna create the same pattern in my shot. 
and then you have the plant growing straight up, so you've got crisscrossing lines in the composition. Sometimes I use both black and white and color photography on the same subject of interest, and they both turn out equally well. They both have a story to tell using different elements. So a black and white image may show off lines and patterns better, and something in color will obviously show a contrast in different colors and shades, like between the green and brown here. This is one of those locations that you'll want to visit every season to see how the landscape changes from blooms in spring and summer to fall colors. I've made it out of the woods and now I'm in the meadow and it's full sun, it's full morning sun. There isn't a cloud in the sky. So I really don't have that impact that I would have on landscape shots if I had clouds above and then trees and then landscape or ground beneath, those three layers. But I'm gonna do the best that I can. And here's a tree amidst the meadow in some wetlands. It's gonna look really stark against the cloudless sky, but that's okay. It's gonna give it a different look and the infrared is gonna emphasize all the vegetation around it and make it pop out a little bit more. So do the best that you can with the situation that you have, whether it's a cloudy sky or whether it's a sunny sky, to find just the right vantage point to tell the story in your pictures. There's so much to see and experience here at Blandford Nature Center that I've barely scratched the surface. I hope my exploration and pictures at least give you a visual taste of the terrain. Check out BlandfordNatureCenter.org for more information about this organization and their mission. Thanks for exploring with me. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked and learned something new. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel and getting notified when a new video posts. And I hope to see you out on the trails.